Hey everybody, welcome back to another community question. Uh, so this is uh, an old one, but it's one that pops up over and over again, and it's a pretty common scenario that a lot of people are seeing in their apps. Um, so our user here is asking, um, they have a database of questions, uh, which is fantastic. Um, we'll show you how to get that set up as well, um, in case you're, you're new to using data tables or data sources in your app. Um, but the question is, how can I move from one question to the next? So how can I move from one item in my um, database to the next item? Um, so uh, the, the scenario here is a, is a quiz app. We'll build um, just kind of a, a, a simple quiz app. You can, um, I'll share the link in the description below. Uh, so you can open up this project and you can remix it for yourself and you can add in your own questions. So we'll, we'll just use some placeholder questions. Let's take a look over in uh, Thunkable here. I've created a, a new project. It's called Next Question. Um, I'm gonna add in a label um, to uh, tell the user that they need to uh, click whatever to get started maybe. Um, get started and then we can uh, resize this okay so that's the right right size we're able to see all the text and uh, let's just put in a single button so I guess ideally depending on what, what, what way you're designing your app you might want a next button and you might want a uh, back button as well so we'll change that to next and we'll rename the button as well you don't you don't have to do that but uh, as you add more uh, buttons and more components to your app, uh, it's it's easier for, for project management, it's easier to, uh, to know what everything's doing. So um, ideally we click this button and we start going through our questions. Um, now the user uh, who asked the question originally said, uh, I have all my questions in, in a database. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna add um, just a, a blank um, table to, to this app. And we're gonna call it questions. Questions. Um, we'll just put in some like dummy questions, placeholder questions. Um, so let's rename this column to be uh, maybe Q's. And then we can have our answers, our A's, uh, in column two, uh, like that. And this will be uh, question one. And then if you come along and you customize this, you can uh, put in whatever you want. Uh, second question. And let's let's just experiment with this a bit here. So, uh, make the third question a little bit longer. And uh, that way, then we'll get to see, um, yeah, what this looks like on on the app. And this is kind of a helpful thing as well when you're when you're designing. Um, so, we've got a couple of questions. Uh, that's great. Um, now let's uh, let's use those here. Uh, inside uh, our app. So let's um, go ahead when the next button is clicked we want to go to our questions data source and um, we want to get um, yeah the, the row the, the the corresponding question the first question I guess uh, so let's try that there and let's see what happens if we get row number one? So click next. We get question one. Uh, clicking next goes to the database and it goes to the table and it gets question number one. So every time I click this button, it's always doing something. Uh, and we could actually I can illustrate that really easily to show you that it is actually doing something. Um, and we we often do this ourselves for our own testing. So we can set the background color here to be a uh, random color. Um, and we can see now we've got this color changing button um, like that every time I click it is it is doing something but what we've told it to do in the logic is always go and get row number one uh, and we're gonna have to add a tiny bit of uh, extra logic here to make sure that we're going to get the, the next question so we'll create a variable and uh, you can call it whatever you want we can call it question uh, number and initially um, we can it depends you know if you follow along with these steps uh, we can we can start at, at zero and then every time the uh, next button is clicked we want to uh, change that question number by one so it'll start at zero and then the first thing it'll do is increase that from zero to one and then it will get the appropriate question number here from our um, from our table of questions uh, so let's try that now so it's at zero at the moment, uh, and then it goes to question one, and then it goes to question two. Now we're at question three, and that, that actually scales quite nicely. The longer question looks fine there. Uh, and then 
uh, clicking on this will go to try and get question four, but there there is no fourth question to to load, so it, it gives us this text null, um, which is which is grand. Um, so there's a, there's a couple of things that we can do here, um, and maybe what we're going to do is is add in a little bit of logic. What do we do when we get to the end of the quiz? Um, so uh, in some scenarios we could go back to the beginning uh, and repeat all the questions again. That might be a little bit uh, boring, but but let's just have a look at how to do that. Um, so if the question number is equal to the number of uh, questions. So we've got uh, this block in here that says number of rows in um, table one. So that's the, that's the block we need to use here. Um, okay, so uh, we wanna do a little bit of a, a check here. We want to see uh, whether or not we're going to the next question or whether we're going back to uh, question number one. So if the block is greater than or equal to um, here, the number of rows, greater than or equal to the number of rows, that's disappeared on me there. Um, so if the question number is greater than or equal to, in this case, three, um, what we'll do is we'll set that question number back to be uh, one. Um, I think that's all we need there for that logic. So we can probably just get away with this simpler block here. Get rid of the if else for now. Uh, uh, set the question number back to one. And that's to um, create create a, an app, create a quiz that, that loops over and over again, like that. Um, so let's try that out there. Um, oh, sorry, set it to zero. Yeah, that makes sense. No, that doesn't because then we'll try and get question number one, sorry. Okay, so, there we go. Wait for this to load. So, um, question one, question two, question three, so that's because we had equal to. Question one, question two, and we're not showing that. So we want it greater than, that's fine. Um, that's the nice thing about testing is we're able to see that here. One, two, three, and that might not have uploaded. Uh, that might have not have updated, excuse me. Uh, so let's take a look here at our button, make a small little change like this, and then you're able to see that the, the test itself has, has updated. So that has uh, one, two, three, and then we go back to one. Okay, great. So uh, let's go back to, sorry, our blocks. And that's all you need to create a kind of looping quiz uh, that goes through all the questions. Now, hopefully, you have more than than three questions. And um, even even as an example, what we can do is just add in uh, an extra question. So we create this question number here. Um, started at zero. Uh, that's just for the very first time the app opens. Uh, the next thing then we do is uh, we look at what happens when the next button is clicked. So we want to change the value of our question number. We're using this variable just to keep track of what question number we're on. Uh, and we increase the number by one each time. Uh, and we do a check here to make sure that we haven't run out of questions. Uh, so if the question number is greater than the number of rows uh, or the number of questions in our, in our uh, table, we will set the counter, set the question number back to one. Um, and then the next thing we do is we update the label, uh, the text that the user sees, uh, and we do that by going to the data table and we find the questions column uh, and we get out uh, the corresponding question number. So the first question uh, for question number one, the second question or the second row for question number two, and so on all the way down through our questions. Uh, and this little block here, again, just a little troubleshooting uh, tip when you're when you're working with your apps, just to see if your if your event is actually firing, if your event is doing something, uh, you can add in something like this where you make the, the color of the text or the color of the background change to be uh, a random color. So that's not needed for the functionality of the app, uh, but it is really nice to have uh, when you're testing. Um, so that logic then is is pretty solid. It's pretty sound. Um, we can add in a final question, uh, and. Uh, why not add uh, a corresponding answer as well while we're at it? And if we test that out again without making any changes to the to the blocks, uh, we go question one, question two, question three. Uh, we now have four questions, so the length of that, uh, the number of rows is four, and it gets uh, the the corresponding question, uh, and it brings us back to the start. Um, so that's that's the way to, to create that looping um, question. And the other the alternative here is that the the quiz ends. 
and um, so we would do something like so if it's greater than um, the number of rows so if it's again we go back to greater than or equal to so we want to um, see what we want to want to make sure that the user can't go to question five in, in this case so if it's greater than or equal to uh, we don't want them going around in a loop forever let's take that out so we want to say change the text to game over uh, let's do it in two steps so um, this this isn't isn't working yet uh, but let's make sure that after the fourth question it says game over but you see we can still click this button um, and we can keep going through all these null rows null quest questions that don't exist so what we want to do is make sure that the button itself is not uh, in enabled so we set the disabled property here to be true um, and that means then that it'll be un uh, unclickable is that a word um, so one two three and then we can click next we can go on to question four but then it says game over here uh, so the disabled property becomes true uh, the button is no longer clickable and that means that that's the end of the of the game so um, you might have if you have a, a another screen you might navigate away then to uh, some different screen your your end screen your high score screen uh, whatever it is then that, that you have in the app so um, let's just move those out of the way uh, these are the blocks then that you would need to create a quiz um, with a, a certain number of questions and then at the end of the questions, when you've run out of questions, uh, you finish the finish the quiz or finish the game um, at the on the last question. Uh, so yeah, that's um, th this project link. I'm gonna I'm gonna share this project link with you. Um, gonna it's very easy to, to do something like this. So you can create a, a copy link here. Um, those are valid for for sixty days. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share this project detail page with you. Uh, so again, it's a very easy thing to uh, to generate, and you can test this out. Um, and you can also you'll be able to see inside when it's uh, somebody else's project. You can see inside their project, uh, and because I have it set to public here, um, you can um, remix it for yourself. So you can reuse all this uh, logic that that I've written here. Uh, if you like it, give it a give it a star as well. Uh, and the the link will be in the description to the video as well. Uh, so thanks a million to our community members for asking this question about um, quizzes. If you have questions about using Thinkable, make sure you join us in the community. Um, join in the conversation uh, and ask your questions there. Um, the you know the ones that we like the most, the ones that we think are most useful to uh, a wide range of users, will turn into videos like this. Um, we'll do a more uh, in-depth um, explanation of, of how they work. Um, so yeah, I will. Uh, don't forget to uh, like this video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos. And I will see you in the community.